Good morning and welcome to worship on this Independence Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. I invite you this morning to join with me in the pledges to our flags, both the American flag and the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all mankind in service and in love. On this first Sunday of the month, it's tradition here at Maple United Methodist Church to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And on this Independence Sunday especially, I find it increasingly important that we have the freedom to gather together to celebrate this sacrament, to worship together, to share in hearing God's word, to share our prayers, our hopes, our concerns, our dreams for our country, as well as for ourselves. So as we gather together on this Independence Day, I invite you to join with us in the sharing of Holy Communion. If you haven't already, please find something that you can use as your elements of communion, a piece of bread, a, a cracker, a glass of juice, so that you can celebrate with us this reminder of our Lord's sacrifice for each one of us. It was on the night that he was betrayed that Jesus took bread, something they had with every meal. But he gave it a new twist, a new meaning that night as he raised it to the heavens and gave thanks to God. And then he broke it. And he passed it to his right and to his left. And he said to his friends who were sharing the meal with him, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take, eat, remember. Remember this day, remember this night, remember this sacrament. I did it for you. And after supper, he took the cup. Again, he raised it to heaven and gave thanks to God. And then he passed it around the table. And he told his friends, his followers, take and drink. This is my blood that is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, remember. I did it for you. In the book of John, it tells us that Jesus taught his followers, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So on this Independence Sunday, I invite you to take, to drink, to remember his love. You gave us your son, O oh Lord. And he gave us himself a gift, a sacrifice for our peace and our redemption. On this Independent Sunday, we remember those who gave themselves, their lives, for us, for our peace, for our redemption as a neighbor as a nation, and we give thanks. Amen.
As we begin our worship service today, I do want to make you aware of some changes that are coming down the pike, as my dad would say. We're going to be having some staffing changes here at the church, and because of that, our YouTube recordings may be taking a bit of a hiatus. Uh, we're losing the person that's been doing our recording and posting for the past two and a half years now, as she and her husband moved to the Upper Peninsula. So if you tune in and there's no new recording, be patient. Feel free to look back at one of our previous services and share in that day once again. We will be resuming our YouTube recordings as quickly as we can. But we ask you to be patient and to keep us in your prayers. Let us hear this greeting on this Independent Sunday. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord to give thanks to the name of our Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your gates. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Shalom. Peace. Peacemaking is more than just saying, may the peace of Christ be with you. It involves a commitment to see the divine in each person, and to behave in such a way that others will discover their own holiness. Recognizing the holiness hidden in those who's, who we oppose doesn't require us to agree with their beliefs. It does invite us to respond to them in ways that bring understanding and that bring peace. So I say to you today, the peace of Christ be with you. And I invite you to show that peace to your neighbors this day, this week, throughout the remainder of your life. As we come to our time of prayer today, I invite you to pray for peace. Peace in our world, peace within our nation's borders, peace in our communities, peace within our own hearts. I invite you to remember those that are struggling with inner demons, that have their own little skirmishes or major wars going on. I invite you to pray for those that will be traveling the roads this holiday weekend. Pray for their safety as they travel. Pray for their safety where they end up and pray for them to return safely home. Here in Battle Creek we have the Hot Air Balloon Festival the field of flight going on this weekend. I invite you to pray for the safety of those involved. A friend of mine, his sister was just diagnosed with a severe form of COVID and severe adult respiratory syndrome. I invite you prayers for those that are still struggling with something that many of us have forgotten was even here for those still struggling with current cases or the after effect of COVID. We have a young man, a grandson of some of our church folks that has been struggling to re regain his life after a severe car accident that killed his best friend. 
and left him hospitalized in a coma for a number of days. Isaiah is still in the hospital struggling to relearn some of the basic tasks, struggling to regain his short-term memory. I invite your prayers for Isaiah and for others that are dealing with those emotional and mental traumas that cause difficulty in their day-to-day -day lives. Let us pray. It is a special weekend, O oh Lord. It's a, a time when our country, for the most part, agrees on celebrating one thing, our liberties, our freedoms, the rights that we have as citizens of these United States. There will be parties and parades and picnics, family gatherings and memories. There will be fireworks and festivities that abound. But in the midst of all the hoopla, in the middle of all of our celebration, O oh Lord, remind us that the reason we are celebrating, the reason we can celebrate, is freedom. Freedom that was purchased for us at a great cost by the men and women of our military down through the ages. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that continue to be in harm's way, who continue to serve us in the armed forces, who continue to protect us in this uncertain time. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that are participating in the field of flight this weekend, for those that are flying, for those that are on the ground, ooing and eyeing at the balloons. We pray for safety for all concerned. We thank you for those that are continuing to volunteer to make this a priority in their lives so that the rest of us can be entertained and be spellbound by the balloons that fly overhead. This day, O oh Lord, we pray for those that are continuing to struggle with that unseen enemy called COVID. We pray for healing, for a strengthening of their bodies once again. We pray for their families that are struggling, watching their loved ones suffer. We continue to pray for our frontline workers, for the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, police officers, and firefighters that still never know if the situation they're going into will have lasting effects. We pray for their protection and their safety. We pray, our oh Lord, for Isaiah, for for him and for others that are dealing with mental issues that are the result of serious trauma. We pray for a healing not just of, of body, but of mind, of spirit, of psyche. We pray for those that struggle with PTSD for whom this weekend will be a hellish nightmare instead of a time of celebration. We pray for our country as we continue to be seen as a beacon of democracy in our world. We pray that we might maintain a sense of the freedom and liberty that is ours because of all that has transpired in the past. Speak to us this day. Speak to us of peace. Speak to us of healing. Speak to us of making a difference in our world because of where we have been and what we have been through. Enable us to be your voice in this tumultuous world. Grant these things, we pray, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Prince of Peace, the author of peace the one who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we continue in our monthly emphasis on the B attitudes, scripture this morning comes from the second chapter of Ephesians. Quite a distance away from Matthew chapter 5 where the Beatitudes appear. But I want to lift up these words from the Apostle Paul that speak to us about peace. Paul in writing to the Ephesians says, Therefore remember that you who formerly are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision which is done to the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He himself is our peace. He has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace, peace to you who were far away and peace to you who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners, no longer strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. I wonder I wonder what peace looks like. I mean real peace. We know that pseudo peace of living in the U.S. where we don't have to take cover from overhead drone strikes or remotely launched missiles. We're far removed from the Blitzkrieg of World War II, the constant shelling of the West Bank in Israel, the guerrilla raids in villages of the Sudan and Afghanistan. We have no idea what it's like to live in a subway in Kiev with no food, no running water, no sunlight as bombs destroy our city overhead. We've never been in an immigration camp in southern Texas or had to walk hundreds of miles to save our families. Most of us have never experienced a dictator's rule 
military oppression, government-led deprivation. Very, very few of us have seen war up close and personal. Even discrimination and injustice are things we've only read about in the history books or seen on TV or YouTube. But we do understand emotional turmoil. We're all too familiar with anger, mental upheaval, stress, and uncertainty that puts us out of sorts, on edge, and leaves us anything but peaceful. We do understand the inner conflicts of good versus evil, faith versus doubt, right versus wrong. Our headlines on any given day remind us of the constant assault on our mental stability, our sense of security, our physical and emotional peace. I dare say each and every person within the sound of my voice yearns for that peace that passes understanding that Paul told the Philippians was part of their birthright. The seventh beatitude in the fifth chapter of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, seems to be quite simple. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. But how do we go about making peace when peace is such a foreign concept to us. I think Paul's words to the Ephesians in this morning's scripture can give us some direction. First and foremost, we need to remember whose we are. The Ephesians were Greeks. They were non-Jews. Paul and the others called them Gentiles, the uncircumcised, the unclean foreigners. To Paul and his companions with Jewish upbringing, the Ephesians were equivalent to the Samaritans. They were untouchable, unacceptable. They were those people that their fathers had warned them about in their growing up years. Paul even pointed out to the Ephesians their unacceptable past. The 11th verse of the second chapter, he started out this morning's scripture saying, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth, you were separate from Christ, without hope, without God in the world. In those days, in that place, those could be fighting words. They were words of division, separation, even hatred. They were definitely not words of acceptance and peace. But, Paul says, that's who you were, but that's not the case anymore. In Christ Jesus, Paul says, you have been brought near. And he goes on to explain, he is our peace. He has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility between them. It's the same message that he gave to the Galatians when he wrote, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. When we recognize who we are in Christ Jesus, when we realize that in God's eyes we are all equal, then we can be at peace with one another. And if we are at peace with one another, we can become the peacemakers 
he expects us to be. Remember who and whose you are. Also remember, Paul writes, that Jesus Christ unifies. In the 15th verse of this morning scripture, Paul writes that Jesus' purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body, his purpose was to reconcile both groups to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. We are all the same in God's eyes. As Paul wrote to the Romans, all have sinned. No exceptions. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. Either sinners in need of God's grace or sinners saved by His grace. And if we are all cut from the same cloth, if we all share the same character flaws, the same spiritual DNA, if you will, then there's a kinship that comes from being in the same boat. In the cross of Christ, those raised in the ways of God have been brought closer to Him. And those that have wandered away from God's will in their lives have been reintroduced to their Creator. At the foot of the cross, both the faithful and the rebel, the believer and the unbeliever, the devoted and the doubter are brought together on level ground. Beneath the cross of Jesus, there is no room for an us and them mentality. No division between God's family and those people. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, he prayed for the soldiers gambling for his clothing as well as the criminals dying on his left and his right. He prayed for the holier-than-thou Pharisees and his shaking in their sandals disciples. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At the cross, Jesus unifies us. He brings us together under the blanket of his forgiveness. He gives us his mercy, his grace. He makes us one with God one with each other, and one with ourselves. He unifies our broken spirits. He brings peace to our fractured personalities. And from our differences, he creates a family, the family of God. Paul's reminder from his letter to the Ephesians is plain. You are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people. You are members, he says, of God's household. If there are no foreigners, if there are no aliens, if there are no longer any enemies, if we are indeed all one in Christ Jesus, then it falls to us to be the peacemakers in our world. Our world is so easily divided these days. Instant access to news, to rumors, to both truth and lies, makes it easy for us to be split apart, to be divided from one another based on our belief systems, our background, our mindsets. Camps of us and them. Clubs of right and wrong. Groups
groups of progressive and conservative, black and white, red states and blue states abound. Far less common are the gatherings of uncommon friends, unlikely allies, strange bedfellows, if you will, who are working together as a team to reach the finish line, to achieve a mutual goal, to find the common good, to achieve peace. Peace is not an individual accomplishment. It's a societal goal, an essential requirement for all humanity. Communities need it, nations need it, our world needs it. And we are challenged. We are called to be peacemakers in the Sermon on the Mount. The Message Bible puts this seventh beatitude this way. You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. Cy Miller and Joe Jackson put it this way in their familiar song from the 80s. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Peace begins with us. With you, with me. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons and daughters of God. Let us pray. When you were born, O Christ, you were heralded as the Prince of Peace. And you call us to share in that peace. More importantly, you call us to distribute that peace in our world. Reawaken within us both the desire for peace and the desire to be ambassadors of your peace in these troubled times. Speak through us that we might set aside our differences, turn our back on those things that divide us, and seek to unite all mankind under your banner, at the foot of your cross, receptive of your grace and your mercy, and that peace that passes understanding that you give to each one of us. Make us this day your ambassadors for peace in our troubled world, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
let peace begin with you and with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step we take, make this your solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Go and be a peacemaker, a peace bringer in our troubled world.